Do you know that a person can survive without water for only three days, but Mahatma Gandhi was able to survive as many as 21 days without food? Those were things I used to know as a normal student in a small town. I know none of those things anymore. I just know about rage and feeling constantly hungry. I was in my last year of high school and working a part-time job so I could save money for higher education. Things were dull, but mostly fine until an otherwise normal afternoon after classes. It happened in the light of day. I was shoved inside a vehicle with expertise. I never saw the faces of the men that took me. I never saw their van stinking of old blood and rancid food. I could only see the blackness of my blind and taste the slight sweetness of chloroform before I lost my senses. When I woke up again, I was completely naked in a poorly lit room. The state I was in made me expect the worst, but there was no pain or bleeding indicating that kind of violence. It was cold, and there was a maddening dripping sound. Something was gleaming in the dark. As soon as I adjusted my eyes, I realized it was a knife. Drip, drip, drip. The small room had nothing but an already dirty toilet, the knife, and a crack on the ceiling dripping slimy, slightly green water. The walls and floor were gray and featureless. A very strong light, like a camera flash, popped into my face, blinding all my senses with the shock. It disappeared after a moment, and I heard a voice. We want to watch your suicide. Let's see how long it will take. They took someone unremarkable, frail, with nothing to live for. But now I had a purpose. I had to frustrate my captors. If they wanted to watch my suicide, I would be the most resilient person in the world. I wouldn't grant their wish. Back then, I didn't know I was being watched by a bunch of sick and twisted people, who kept up with my daily misery in the comfort of their houses and their anonymousness. I slept on the cold, hard floor, food never came, and the only source of water was the murky leak on the ceiling. I drank it, humiliated. It tasted worse than shit, and I would know that since I fed on my own waste during the first few days. The only indication that a day had ended was the blinding flash and the same cold, mocking voice telling me that they were surprised I had made it so far. I was so hungry. So hungry. So hungry. The room was getting hotter from my breathing every day. There was no proper ventilation, it seemed to be just enough to not let me die from carbon monoxide poisoning, a merciful death compared to the one they planned for me. I didn't know why they chose me. I still don't know. I never wronged anyone. I never excelled at anything to be a target of one's envy. It was just a purposeless act of evil. The fact that it was completely random made my hatred grow and, with it, my determination. My stomach hurt beyond words. I was constantly sick from the putrid smells all around me. My body ached all over. My skin was matted and flaky, my hair falling from malnutrition. I grabbed the knife. I felt watched in cruel anticipation. Not today. I chopped off my left pinky and shoved it in my mouth before I could think too much about it. My own blood dripped on my chest as I chewed on my own bones. The crunching sound should be so sickening. My teeth should be hurting so much or even breaking, bone against bone. I should be horrified to phagocyte a part of my own body. But I was just so happy to be eating. After that, I felt my body growing stronger every day, like a member of the cannibal tribe in Papua New Guinea after ritualistically feeding on their departed loved ones. I laughed maniacally for hours at a time and trembled endlessly but I was more alive than I've ever been in that captivity. I rationed my food slash body wisely. I needed my right hand, so it was crucial to spare at least four fingers on it, but I was free to feed on my left hand. My toes were pretty much useless, I've been dragging myself on the floor to move around anyway. But I didn't need to feed on myself for long. No more than a week after I first took a bite on myself, 
the voice after the blinding flash had something else to say. We are selling you. The official story is that I miraculously escaped my perpetrators during their flawed operation to move me to my new owner. And by the time I had reached a neighbor and the police were called, they had already fled the crime scene. The investigation was kept under extreme secrecy, so I didn't make the world news. Hell, I only made the local news as local teenager mutilated by unknown man. Someone even donated me a prosthetic hand. The police were able to take down the website where my daily torture was being streamed non-stop, and just then I found out that I was a star. I laughed for days because everyone felt so bad for me, not knowing that the torture I endured was way beyond losing a hand and a few toes. I laughed for days because I know the truth no one else does. I know how, right when they opened the door to my prison, my body felt like it was possessed by a bestial creature and before I knew it, I used superhuman strength to crush the bones of five men all at once, then eat their fresh corpses whole. I even licked the leftover blood from the walls before I opened the doors and headed to the closest house, dragging my bad foot. At that moment, I felt like I was the co-pilot of my body, the wheels man was a voice screaming kill and devour. I could never escape if something hasn't taken hold of me, I'm not strong or even fast. I'd do anything to spend the rest of my life quietly, having my body and mind slowly heal and recover from devastating trauma. The problem is that eating the raw flesh of my captors was the most pleasant experience I've ever had in my life. And, while I've been chasing mercilessly all the monsters that watched my suffering for their own enjoyment, I'm too hungry. Their tainted flesh has not been enough for me, no, for us. So, I was doing what I do best the other day. By that, I mean sifting through that depraved cesspool of the internet known as the deep web and just generally being a lazy sack of shit. I spend a lot of time doing that, just randomly clicking links to things I probably shouldn't and then being horrified by what lies on the other side. I've seen a lot of shit on there, scoreboards, Dobbins, torture sites, IRL rape, animal cruelty, you get the picture. You've all heard the stories. Everything wrong with the human species can be found somewhere on the deep web, or so they say. I find it all fascinating. To glimpse people when anonymity takes hold and see what monstrous things people are capable of behind closed doors. It's like peeling back the curtain on a Sesame Street play and finding the showrunners having a satanic orgy backstage. You see people for what they really are. Monsters. So I began my voyage, monster in hand and freshly stone mind ready to be mortified. From my closet, the inflatable erotic doll I had been given as a gag Christmas present looked on in a disapproving manner with a lifeless, open-mouthed stare. Don't judge me, Miley. I performed the usual diagnostics and booted up Tar. I found myself on the hidden wiki soon after, staring at the dozens of links available for the taking. I saw little interest there so quickly I switched over to DuckDuckGo. I pondered upon what to type into search for a bit. You have to be careful how you go about browsing TR and randomly entering murder or torture into a search bar could get you into a world of trouble. You never know who's lurking. I finally ended up typing in one word. Sick. That ought to get some interesting results. The results were initially less than stellar, but soon I did find myself on an apparent blog of some sort. The darkness of the soul. Edginess level, maximum. I glanced through the blog and found dozens of entries ranging from paranormal, conspiracy theories, short stories, and real-life crime essays. It was actually pretty interesting, and the guy who wrote it was indeed pretty gifted in the vernacular department. I spent some time glancing through them until one entry caught my eye. It was titled, Dark Sites on the Dark Web, Are They Real? I found my interest peaked, and so I clicked it. The article listed several relatively prominent and notoriously vile sites like Cannibal Cafe, Cruel Onion Wiki, Violent Fantasies, and Playpen. None of which were what I was really looking for, 
but then one caught my eye that I didn't recognize. It was listed only as, the site with no name. The author was even kind enough to provide a link, to which I clicked, without a moment's hesitation. This hidden site has to be seized, as part of a joint law enforcement operation, by blah blah blah. I groaned while reclining in my swivel chair and downing the remainder of my monster. They always have to take away the fun. Just as I was about to click back though, I noticed a small detail that drew my attention back. In the lower left-hand quadrant of the page, there was a slight discoloration that caught my eye. I've seen that same message hundreds of times, but this one looked different. On a whim, I highlighted the section with my mouse. Just as I had suspected, a series of text lit up with strands of numbers. The numbers just looked like gibberish at first, but on closer inspection, I noticed a single Russian word. Translation, Enter. Luckily for me, I speak a bit of Russian, so I recognized the phrase right away. I hovered the cursor over the word and watched as the pointer shifted to indicate a hidden link. Clever, hiding behind a smoke screen like that. That's a first for me. I clicked it. The page loaded for a while before finally opening to a new page. It was black with red font, and much as the article suggested had no title on top of the page. It appeared to be just another catalog site. There was actually very little substance anywhere on the page, just random links with no indication as to where they may lead. I clicked several of the links, but all of them turned out to be dead. Well except for one that is, which opened to a disgusting image of a woman shitting on a guy's face. I nearly vomited at the sight of it. I have a pretty strong stomach when it comes to gore and violence, but poop is my kryptonite. Why someone would allow someone else to defecate on them, I will never understand. But then again, there's a lot of things I'll never understand, especially regarding the dark web. I knew it was a troll on their end, and I'll admit they got me pretty good. I knew they were hiding something though. I mean, why go to the trouble of constructing an elaborate decoy if there wasn't anything illegal going on? Sure, Creating the backdrop of the infamous government agency message wouldn't be too difficult, but if nothing illegal was going on then why bother doing it at all? Mimicking my efforts from earlier, I highlighted the page once again. Sure enough, there was something at the bottom of the page which had been all but invisible beforehand. It was a series of numbers, spaced out horizontally. I thought at first it was another address, but there was no dot onion at the end. The numbers were organized as follows. 4, 9, 11, 6, 2, 7, 12, 1, 3, 8, 10, 5. I thought maybe it was some sort of password at first glance, but to what? All the links were dead except for the one with that nasty image, and I was not about to click on that again. I pondered over the image for a moment before noticing another detail. I counted the links and noticed that there were 12 in total. That had to be related to the numbers. I thought maybe clicking each link in the order correlating to the strand of numbers would unlock something, so I tried that. After clicking the last one though, nothing had changed. I sat back and again studied the chain of numbers. There had to be a pattern or method to how they were organized. I pulled my phone out and punched the numbers into Google, but found nothing but tips for calculating fractions. In no mood for math, I put my phone away and again stared at the screen. What if the numbers weren't related to the links? What if this was simply a clue to another site of some kind? I scoured all over the page, clicking every square inch to try and find something. I don't know why I had become so infatuated with discovering the answer, but boredom can be a deadly motivator. Suddenly, I was struck with an epiphany while staring at the top link. It had 12 digits in it. In fact, most, if not all dot onion addresses have 12 digits in them. What if the numbers were clues to an entirely new address? I counted the links, and lo and behold, there was a grand total of 12, each with 12 digits. Maybe each number was in relation to the link in the sequence. 
Maybe they were dead links because they were never designed to lead anywhere. They were only designed to be clues. On a new hunch, I wrote down the fourth digit on the top link, the ninth on the second, the eleventh on the third, so on and so forth until I had an entirely new web address. I typed what I had written into the search bar and hit enter. My eyes widened as another web page began to load. I gave myself a metaphoric pat on the back for unraveling the mystery but had no idea what I was about to stumble into. The page finally loaded, and I was given a new name at the top of the page. Happy fun time. There were dozens of pictures and videos organized all over the page, none of which I would ever describe with the words, happy or fun. It was a gore forum. My heart pulsated in my chest as I looked upon the first image. It was a picture of a guy who had his skull crushed beneath the tire of a truck. Blood and gray matter had been scattered everywhere as several onlookers stood about gawking at the scene. The second was an image of another man who had been decapitated and had his genitals placed in his mouth. Probably a victim of the cartels, if I had to guess. The third was a video, a very depraved video. It was grainy quality and terribly shaky, but after a few seconds, it showed what appeared to be a lone woman walking down the street at night. The person filming was obscured a couple of dozen yards away in some alley. Suddenly, two other men emerged further down the street and bum-rushed the woman. They were on her in an instant, before she even had time to scream. They grabbed her, and the cameraman sprang up to join the action. All the while he chuckled quietly in the most unsettling tone I have ever heard anyone utter. It was a giddy and juvenile giggle the likes of which could only be produced by a severely deranged individual. The woman attempted to scream, but the two men held her mouth firmly, preventing her from doing so. They dragged her back into an alley, as the giggling cameraman followed. I turned it off then, knowing exactly where it was headed. A reasonable person would have just exited the site by that point, but morbid curiosity is a powerful narcotic. The next entry on the list though, ensured that any doubts I had of the authenticity of the site would no longer stand. It was a series of pictures, this time involving a little girl who couldn't have been more than five years old. She had sandy blonde hair and royal blue eyes. The pictures were innocuous at first, or at least they would have been if not for the site on which they were posted on. It started as just pictures that looked to be taken straight from someone's Facebook profile. A deep pit formed in my stomach as I sifted through them. The pictures began to grow ever more disturbing as they went. At first, it was the little girl with her family and dogs, but soon the pictures began to look as though someone was taking them without her knowledge. There was one where she was swinging at the park with several other children. Another was where she was playing with toys in a backyard, with the picture looking like it was taken from over the fence. I felt a cold chill creep down my spine as I anticipated where the pictures were headed. One picture stood out immediately. It was of a house at night, illuminated only by the flash of the camera. The next picture showed two people, a man, and a woman lying in bed. Their throats were both slits, and their bed was soiled with a dark crimson. The next picture showed the little girl, clearly distressed with a black swollen eye. The remainder of the pictures went on to show the unknown cameraman taking her and doing terrible things to her. I won't even dignify his actions by putting them to paper, some things are just better off forgotten entirely. Needless to say, it was the most goddamn disgusting thing I have ever seen. As horrible as the images were, the comments may have been almost on par. They were a mix of English and Russian. There were dozens of them, with almost all lobbying heaps of praise onto the vile cameraman and expressing their own sexual gratification with his actions. God is dead, and the dark web is proof of that. How in the world did we get to the point in which human beings like this can exist? I felt sorrow rise within me for the innocent young girl who had been so violently violated and torn from the world. Normally I feel nothing for random people on the internet, but the tragedy that befell her reminded me of things done to me in my own past. Maybe that's why I'm so fucked up. 
More than sorrow though, I felt anger. That was when I made my first mistake. Congratulations fellas, you are without a doubt the most disgusting sacks of shit in the entire world. Cops have been notified, so have fun jerking each other off in the time you have left. Might as well do the world a favor though and just kill yourselves. I couldn't stop my hands from typing out the message, and before I knew it my comment was inscribed just below all the others. It sat upon the screen for a moment, before others began to appear. All of them insulted me and made fun of my empathy for the girl. I and the other users fired back and forth for a while before a familiar user posted. It was the same profile that had first posted the images, to begin with. His first post confused me, as it was only a set of numbers with intermittent periods. I glanced at the comment before a horrible realization took hold. It was an IP address, my IP address. Before I could react, he followed up with my full name, address, and social security number. I froze, unable to figure out how he had tracked me. It was then that I discovered my second mistake. Like an idiot, I had neglected to activate Tails. They had traced me, son of a bitch. Thanks for stopping by my friend. I'll see you soon, winky face. Then you will get a whole episode on this site starring you. His words sent chills down my spine. I stared at the screen, dumbfounded and without a clue how to proceed. Not content with two mistakes, and apparently with a secret lust for self-endangerment and masochism, I made a third one. Fuck off. I posted the comment and quickly shut down the TR browser and closed my laptop. I thought about the events that had just transpired and somehow just ended up laughing them off. After all, there was no way that bastard was going to go through the trouble of tracking me down. People say shit online all the time, but they never act on it. It's all just empty threats. Either way though, I had some preparation to take care of. I called the police on the non-emergency hotline and informed them of the events. I gave them the web address I had gotten, and they told me they would investigate it. After that I called my insurance company to alert them about someone finding my social and proceeded to drink myself stupid, hoping liquor would drown the memories. Days went by and nothing had changed, that is until the end of the week. I had just returned from work when I saw an unfamiliar black Astro van sitting down the block from my house. I paid it little mind at the time, and to be honest, only realized the implications after the event. I had since forgotten my careless spree into the deep from days earlier and thought nothing of the van. I got inside and again booted up my computer for some mindless browsing. As I did, I heard a noise outside. It sounded like someone climbing the fence outside. I live alone and have no pets, so I knew it wasn't from my house. I thought about investigating it, but quickly the shattering of glass made it clear that it was not a good idea. I heard footsteps emanate from down below, giving the distinct sound of boots on the hardwood floor. They grew nearer and nearer, and I found myself frozen with terror. It was like my body just refused to accept the situation and would not respond no matter what I did. That would have been a most astute time for me to have gotten my gun, the problem was, I didn't have one. The footsteps got louder and louder, all the way up the stairs, with booming stomps of feet. I heard them trudge towards my bedroom door and linger just outside. My heart was in my throat, and sweat had begun to drip from every square inch of my body. The door slowly creaked open and in stepped a man with dark clothing and a simplistic porcelain mask. He walked inside brandishing a suppressed pistol in his right hand. He grew closer and closer, and then he walked right past me. I don't know why they never bother to check the closet, it's always the first place I look. I guess maybe he was too distracted by the doll which sat at my desk, put up with headphones on to complete the decoy and lull in the approaching predator. I guess that inflatable sex doll came in handy after all. He stepped towards the dummy, and I emerged from behind like a tiger from the jungle, silent and with ravenous hunger. 
I could feel the saliva begin to pool within my mouth as he reached the prop. He put a hand on the dummy, and I put my hand on his throat. He struggled as they all do, but I quickly had stripped the firearm from his grip. A simple incision underneath the arm with a blade does wonders in demanding obedience. All it takes is a slit to the ulnar nerve, and the arm becomes essentially useless. The unbearable pain it causes is also a bonus. He dropped the gun, and I slammed him to the ground face first. With one motion I put my foot on his left elbow and grabbed his wrist with my hand while my other held the blade to his throat. I then leered close behind him and whispered to him. What time does my episode air? I don't want to miss it. Before he could respond, I yanked his arm backward while pushing my boot firmly on his elbow. His bone cracked and then popped from its hinge as his arm bent backward in the opposite direction it was meant to. The man cried out in an agonizing scream, but I quickly silenced him. He writhed upon the ground and moaned pitifully as the blood began to drip from his mangled arm. His eyes looked back to me, and I could see that oh-so-sweet luster of panic-stricken prey glisten in his dark brooding eyes. The hunter had become the hunted, and I could not stop the diabolic grin from slithering its way onto my face. It's time to feed. It's a weird feeling when you first kill someone. Most start as a crime of passion, anger which boils over and leads to an act of violence. You learn a lot about people in their last seconds of life. Their secrets, their faith, their fear. You learn a lot about yourself, too. Like how you, a normal dude could so easily swipe the life of another. There is a raw primal satisfaction in that feeling, knowing that you yourself hold dominion over death. The feeling is addictive. Once is never enough though, and soon you will feel the urge to repeat your actions. The dopamine rush, the burst of euphoria, it's as sweet as honey to the mind. I was more careful from then on, picking targets with no relation to me, and no reason to suspect my intent. After a time though, I grew tired of targeting the unsuspecting populace. It just didn't thrill me in the way it used to. You can only shoot fish in a barrel so many times before you want to dive into the ocean. What I needed was a new challenge. A new prey to rekindle the flame beneath me. I don't want the sheep anymore, what I need now is the wolf. Do you have any idea how satisfying it is to see the eyes of a predator turn into a helpless little lamb? To know that the terror they once instilled in others is now force-fed down their own throat? They never expect it, and there is no feeling so delicious. It is the ultimate poetic justice, monstrous actions done to monstrous people. The flood of adrenaline through their system also gives the meat a wonderful flavor. My real name is irrelevant, for the annals of history will forget. But I have become known in certain circles by my adopted moniker, Sig Sepsis. You can find my advertisements all over the web in one form or another. My skills are taboo but refined. My clientele is willing, and their tastes are insatiable. To hunt a monster, you must know how to find a monster. You must become a monster. So, to all the friends upon the forum known as Happy Fun Time, and the rest of the world at large, I see you. If any of you gentlemen would like to retrieve the remains of your fallen comrade, then you know where to find me. And if you, dear reader, happen to partake in the odious fantasies of the repugnant underworld as well, then perhaps I will see you one day too. I used to be a normal person. I just want to get that out clear first of all yeah, I had a few strange hobbies, but when this all started out I was just like your average Joe. One of my strange hobbies was browsing the deep web, it was mostly out of curiosity, let me assure you. I wasn't involved in anything shady and also made sure to take adequate precautions. One day I was just looking at random web pages when I stumbled upon a curious one. Hello there. Are you perhaps interested in buying other people's souls? 
I've been collecting people's souls for a very long time, and I have a bit extra. It was one of the most basic web pages that you could imagine, with only an address on where to send the Bitcoin to buy one. I laughed when I saw this, I had seen my share of scams on the deep web, but this one was new. I went to close the window before something popped up on my screen. Hello there. I see you're browsing my site. My heart nearly froze as I saw it was a chat box. But I was sure the security measures I had taken were sufficient to prevent someone from tracking me or hacking into my computer, how did this pop-up appear out of nowhere then? Relax. I just noticed that you were going to leave without buying anything. It seems you haven't been convinced what I'm selling is real. Why not try a free sample? A simple, yes, and no, dialogue box appeared. Now, I should have clicked on, no, but in my curiosity, I clicked on, yes. A bad decision in hindsight, but I wanted to know where this was going. It's rather hard to explain what possessing a soul is like. You probably think that a soul is immutable or indestructible in other words. And you'd be right, in that moment I could tell in my head that I held a single soul. But, there was a way for me to manifest it in the real world. It appeared as a tiny ball of light, no bigger than the smallest bone in your pinky. I reached out to touch it, and a flood of memories entered my head. The soul was of a woman by the name of Alexandra Cortez. She had not had a very happy childhood and had escaped her home when she turned 16. A few bad decisions involving drugs and she had literally nothing left on her and was slowly dying. It was here that her memories became less clear, there was a strange shadow that I could see but nothing clearer than that. Mind you, everything else that I could see had been as clear as if I was the one seeing it. But this figure was covered in what I could only describe as dark smog. She had sold her soul to this, thing in exchange for money. The rest of her life was rather good, not fantastic by any means, but it was still decent and paradise compared to what she had suffered earlier. It all ended one day when she was walking along a dark street corner and a man ambushed her. She died that night, though not before hours of torture at his hands. There was far more of course, I had her entire life in my hands, but I only put down the important bits given her whole biography could fill up several books. That wasn't all though, I could hear her thoughts as I held her soul in my hand. She was pleading, begging me, to let her go. Now, you're probably wondering what the afterlife is like. I have to confess that I never found out just that there was something beyond where souls could go. After listening to her pleadings, I agreed to let her go. Much as I said earlier, I can't really explain how I let her go, just that I did. She vanished before me and the light also went away with her leaving my mind completely clear. I thought what had happened was just some sort of odd hallucination or rather, I hoped that that was what it was. I didn't want to believe there was some monster collecting souls around on the internet. That was until four days later when I got an anonymous email linking back to that site. Hello there. I hope you enjoyed your free sample. Perhaps you would like to purchase another. We're having a sale now. The mail confirmed for me that it wasn't some weird fever dream, and after a moment's hesitation, I decided to make an actual purchase. I should have realized that something was wrong the moment I saw the prices. They were dirt cheap, which made very little sense given what I learned later on. I got the souls of three more women, and they were quite similar in many ways. Much like with Alexandra, I couldn't see the entity they sold their souls to properly. The amounts of money they got for their souls were quite staggering, I had barely paid 0.00001% of that price. Again, that should have told me that something was off about this whole thing, but I was rather oblivious to the fact then. What I was more focused on was that they had all died in similar ways, by being ambushed by a man. They never saw his face though but they had all died in agonizing ways. Letting their souls go free brought a certain peace to my mind. Kind of like animal rights activists who buy animals intended for slaughter and then release them, I guess.
Except I was releasing these human souls from damnation, I highly doubted that whatever entity bought them in the first place was kind to them. I bought another one a few days afterward and it was here that things took a dark turn. It was the soul of a man named Christopher. I don't want to share his full name here, but that hadn't even been what I had been concentrating on at the time. No, when I went through the memories of his life, I was sickened by what I saw. This man was a serial killer. Those four women I told you about earlier. He was the one who had killed them. He had done it to over seventeen more. The mere thought of it made me want to throw up. Again, I couldn't see the figure to whom he sold his soul to. He hadn't done it for money, no, he had been caught by the police and had exchanged his soul for getting out of jail. Some sort of legal loophole was there because the police didn't document a piece of evidence correctly and he was let go. And he killed again. And again. Ten more victims before being caught and given the death penalty. Much like those before him, he begged to be released. But, no sort of compassion emerged in my mind. I was sickened by what he had done and appalled that he had suffered so little compared to his victims. In my rage, I took hold of his soul and wondered what I could do with it. I could now hear him pleading again in my mind, but I ignored that and lit the stove. I then dropped the small ball of light onto the flame. Oh, he definitely felt that. He couldn't die, but he could feel the flame consume him. I could hear his screams, and though at first I was disgusted with myself, I learned to live with it. This man had no regrets or remorse for what he had done aside from the fact that he was dead. It became a daily routine for me. I would try to find new ways to torment him. I would stick him in my freezer. I would stab his soul with a knife. I even thought about buying acid from somewhere to dip him in, but that would have raised too many questions. I never really considered myself to be a vindictive person, I think it was because I had been so close to some of his victims, and had felt all they felt when they died that I did what I did. Eventually, I got tired of this after a few weeks and let him go, but in case you're worried I assure you he suffered ten times worse than what he had dealt out. I then bought another soul a couple of weeks later. This one belonged to a woman who had killed three of her own children. My heart was hardened from before and I went about my way making sure she got what she deserved. It continued like that, nearly every soul that I bought was some sort of horrible criminal. I didn't get any innocence to release as I did earlier. Soon, my apartment had over two dozen of them. I spent nearly every free waking hour tormenting them as much as I could. It was more addicting than anything I had ever tried before. Eventually, I ran into a small roadblock, though, the prices for the souls increased. Exponentially, I should add, they were worth right about how much they should have been. I had already released a good number and was quite frustrated that I couldn't get my hands on some more. I got an email a few days after that. Hey, there champ. Seems that you're a bit short on cash lately, but since you've been such a great customer, I was thinking that you could have a few of them for free. With a few strings attached, of course. I barely even read the conditions as I agreed to it, that was just how much I was hooked. Now, I have over a hundred souls. I spend all of my time dealing with them, it's strange, but I don't think I've eaten something in the past few months. I haven't even gone to work and I thought they'd kick me out of my apartment for non-payment of rent one day, but they haven't. I have noticed a few changes when it comes to my body as well. There are two small bumps on the top of my head that won't go away, I've been meaning to go to a doctor but haven't found the time. My skin has turned a different color as well, and I feel something growing out of my back. But really, I can't be bothered with all of that. A new shipment of souls has come from the website, and I need to get to work on them. I knew I shouldn't have gone to the dark web, but I was just too curious. All the stories you hear and see. I just couldn't help myself. I'm not just talking about the deep web either. No, 
I mean the actual dark web. The dark web is more than just fake scare sites and a place where you can get illegal drugs. There is plenty of gore on the surface web, but there's no telling what is real and what is fake. If you go through all the hoops of getting to the dark web, it has to be real right? Regardless, I wanted to find out what the dark web really was. The deep web is incredibly easy to access. All you have to do is download Tor and you are in. The dark web isn't quite so simple. I spent weeks going through forums and getting information from the weirdest people on the internet. Eventually, I was able to get my key to the dark web. I knew I was putting myself in danger from the beginning, but that wasn't something I was really worried about. I didn't value my life much. I really didn't have much going for me. So, if this was the way I died, at least it would be interesting right? Despite my possible death wish, I still did everything I could to protect myself before entering the dark web. I set up multiple VPNs through multiple virtual machines. I did essentially everything I knew about to protect myself from dark web boogeymen. Once I got to the dark web it was much like I had imagined in my head. Trafficking sites, gore live streams, and even more illegal drugs. Basically, the deep web on steroids. I checked out one of the human trafficking sites first. It promised an obedient wife. I wasn't completely convinced it was real at first until I saw someone I actually recognized. I wouldn't have recognized her beat-up face if not for the tattoo on her arm. It was a girl I had worked with for a while, but she had gone missing during her last vacation. Everyone knew she was sleeping with the boss. Guess she wouldn't be getting that promotion after all huh? I almost burst out with laughter when I saw the price tag on her. $50,000, as if she was actually worth that much. Now satisfied that what I was looking at was real, I clicked on one of the live streams. The one I picked had a giant picture of a clown. When the stream loaded, I was introduced to a clown that was casually dancing in the center of the screen. I didn't realize IT Part 2 was already out. The dark web really was great after all. After finishing his jig, the clown moved closer to the camera. We're just about to get started, ladies and gentlemen. Pick your choice in the chat, A, B, or C. He he he. The clown said. I debated whether or not to make a choice in the chat. You hear some stories of people not choosing to chat on the dark web and getting targeted. Then you also hear of people typing something stupid in the chat and subsequently getting targeted. I decided to go by an old saying I had heard once. When in doubt, guess C. So I typed my answer into the chat. I wasn't sure what each option would lead to, but the chat seemed pretty split between A and C. There were a few Bs in there, but it certainly wasn't going to win. I sat back and waited for the results. After a few minutes, the clown came back onto the screen. This time he wheeled in a man firmly tied to a wheelchair. The man was wearing a sheep mask, so I couldn't identify him even if I wanted to. It was obvious he didn't want to be there, but his restraints held him tight. The clown pushed him into the center of the frame before dancing in front of the camera again. Oh ho ho, such a close pole. And the winner is... C. This week C is for carnivore. I hope you all enjoy the show. After this, the clown kicked the man in the wheelchair backward so that his head was now on the floor. The man had leaned forward to cushion his head from the blow, but seeing as what was about to happen he probably wished he hadn't. If he had died from the fall, it would have been much less painful. After kicking the man, the clown seemingly left the room, and I was left wondering what would happen next. The chat had begun to make their guesses. I had my guess as to what the carnivore would be as well, but even I was somewhat surprised with the result. After a few minutes, a couple of alligators were visible on the live stream. Perhaps they were crocodiles. I never remember the difference between the two. Anyway, the crossigators began to make their way closer to the restrained man. 
they must have been starved because once they found the meat, they instantly began to rip into the man's flesh. The chat erupted with creeps who were obviously getting off to this. Of course, I had seen gore before, but this was an altogether different experience. It didn't take long for the Allodiles to completely consume the man. His screams had long since stopped after they ripped apart enough of him. Once they were finished, a trap door opened. Plunging whatever remained of the man, and the beasts down to who knows where. Once the trap doors came back up the floor was as good as new. Well except for a few blood stains here and there. The clown danced his way back onto the screen. He thanked everyone for coming and hoped that we would all join him again soon. Before he signed out though, someone in the chat decided to get brave. I'm going to find you, and kill you. The chatter said. What an idiot, I thought to myself. This was exactly the kind of thing you read about in stories. If real life is anything like the stories, then this guy will be the next star of this live stream. I think the clown seemed to have the same thought as me. Is that you in the chat, Liam Neeson? Why don't you be my co-host for the next show? I promise to show you a good time." The clown said before once again bursting out into hysterical laughter. The chat began to erupt with laughter as well. They all began targeting and making fun of the commenter. I had had enough though, so I closed out of the dark web. Several weeks went by after that, and nothing happened to me. I never went back to the dark web after that. Not because it scared me, but in a way it just kind of bored me. I had fed my curiosity, and I was satisfied with that. The whole experience almost went to the back of my mind. After a few days had gone by, and no one had attempted to kidnap me, I guess I decided I was safe. As it turns out, I wasn't. I still don't know exactly how he found me, but somehow he did. About a month after my dark web experience I woke up to find myself in pitch darkness. I couldn't move my hands or feet. I knew immediately what was happening, so I didn't try to fight it. I didn't really see the point. Hey, I'm awake, can we get this over with? I shouted out. After a few minutes, I was pulled out of whatever box that I had been put in, and I was placed in a wheelchair. A familiar clown fastened me to the wheelchair, and then he began pushing me out somewhere. Why don't I get a cool mask? I asked. If I was going to die, I wanted to at least go out with my dark humor intact. No. The clown said coldly. I guess that cheerful act was only for the camera. What a bummer. This is why method actors are always better. The clown wheeled me into a room and placed my back to the camera. How rude. How would Hollywood scout me out like this? The clown still decided to bust out all his killer dance moves in front of me though. I think he even did a Fortnite dance. Disgusting. Then, he approached the camera. You guys know the drill. A, B, or C. Vote now. The clown said. Before the results of the poll could finish there was a large banging noise coming from some room in front of me. Was that one of my potential fates making that noise? Apparently not, because the clown stopped what he was doing, and immediately armed himself as he made his way to the noise. It wouldn't help him though. I watched from my front row seat as the clown's arm which was holding a gun came flying backward. The rest of the clown was then sent flying backward with a kick. After a few moments, I was able to see the person who delivered the kick. He was a massive man, nearing seven feet tall. He had to be good at basketball. He was wearing a unique mask, it almost looked tribal in some ways. The most prominent feature about him though was the severed heads. There was a head on on each shoulder, and one in the center of his chest. The two on his shoulders looked mostly decomposed, but the one on his chest seemed somewhat fresh. That could not be sanitary. The clown had almost gotten back to his feet when the man kicked him down again. The clown put his remaining arm up in a feeble attempt to protect himself, 
and the man proceeded to chop off his other arm with his machete. It looked quite sharp. The man then placed his foot on the clown's chest to prevent him from squirming. I'm sure you can imagine what happened next. Let's just say the man added to his collection. After collecting his prize, the man began to approach me. Would I be head number five? The police will pick you up in 30 minutes. The man said. With that, the man simply turned around and left. True to his word, after about 30 minutes police busted into the building. They must have been incredibly confused at the sight that lay before them. They even told me to put my hands up, even though I was clearly tied to a wheelchair. After they had me evaluated at a hospital they asked question after question. I did my best to tell them everything that happened, but some things in this world just don't make sense. I asked them if they were going to put me into witness protection, but they said I wasn't in any real danger anymore. Well, it's whatever, I guess. I suppose that man isn't exactly after me, and I won't have to worry about the clown anymore. I probably won't be returning to the dark web either. I guess the lesson of this story is that not all heroes wear decapitated heads, but some do. I am what you'd call a crypto addict. Before that though, I was someone who enjoyed browsing the deep web. I wasn't really looking for anything in particular, just curious as to whether or not the stories I had heard were true. I never really found anything that creepy, though but it was my first encounter with Bitcoin. A few sites used it, and it was the first time I'd ever heard of cryptocurrency. As such though, I had thought that it was a scam or something shady at that point. This was back in the years 2012 to 2014 so as you can imagine I'm really kicking myself for thinking that and not buying a few coins. My interest in the deep web waned over time, but around the year 2017, I began reading about cryptocurrency and that oh so shady thing Bitcoin on mainstream news outlets. That's when I made a deeper dive into the world of crypto. My goal at the beginning was just to earn enough money to pay off my student loans. Of course, nothing was ever that easy. I had made nearly every single mistake you could make while buying crypto. Once, I lost my seed phrase. I've sent crypto to the wrong wallet by mistake. I've messed up and sold at a loss countless times. Twice I've been fooled by pump and dump schemes. Despite all of this, my net monetary change from buying into crypto has still been positive overall. That's mainly because I wisened up over the years and made back the money I lost and then some. Of course, every time I hear about a random coin going up 20 times in price I do wish I would have seen the opportunity, but I know most of those coins probably don't have much value or long-term prospects. I invest in safe projects but of course, like almost anyone else, I've been on the lookout for the next big thing. You know, the next big project that's going to the moon so to speak. I got an email from an old acquaintance of mine, let's call him Frank. Frank and I went back to the days when I scoured the deep web, and the two of us would often exchange information regarding anything interesting that we'd found. I hadn't gotten a message from him in two years though, so I was kind of surprised. Hey. I know it's been a while, but I saw this weird thing and I think you'd want to check it out. I see from your profile, that you've been in the crypto space for a while, right? What do you think about this? It's a site claiming to have made a new kind of coin. There was a link to a website. At first, I was really confused this website was on the deep web, but according to this mail was regarding a new crypto coin. That made no sense. When you made a new coin one of the first things you wanted to do, was get as many people in on the project as possible. Making all information about your new coin exclusive to the deep web was a guarantee, that it would probably never take off. 
and again, maybe they were making some sort of super secure coin which the government couldn't trace so they kept it on the down low. Regardless, I decided to check out the link. The website was honestly nothing to write home about. It was decently organized but was rather plain it looked like a web page from 2007. This was definitely the wrong thing to do if you wanted people to be interested in what you were doing or convincing them that you had a great new idea for something. There wasn't even too much information on the site about the coin itself with most of it linking to a video they had made. There was a forum, but accessible only to members. Guessing there was nowhere else to go, I went ahead, and clicked on the video. It showed a dark room with a desk right in the middle. Someone walked in wearing a white mask and a dark hoodie. As he spoke, his voice was distorted, so he was clearly using a filter of some sort. Greetings. Thank you for your interest in our new project, one by which we hope to revolutionize the very concept of cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. I have long since been a member of the crypto space, but I consider myself to be an environmentalist first. You must have already heard about the environmental impact that mining cryptocurrency has. Many people have spoken about that. As such, we wanted to look for a way to solve this problem. A solution quickly came to me, but it was a bit of an unorthodox one. You see, I am a man of many interests, and the occult was one of them. One thing I had always been told was that spirits, demons, what have you, they always know everything going on in the world. They don't follow the normal laws of physics either. It was at this point that I began frowning. What on earth was this? Was this guy really talking about ghosts and spirits in a crypto video? I thought that it might be possible to use this to our advantage. You see, a spirit can theoretically solve a problem in an instant. Time works differently for them, and the best part is the environmental impact is nil. I was just about ready to turn this off at this point. What kept me going was a mild curiosity regarding where this guy was going. This had to be some sort of scam, right? But what was the scam? Was he going to ask for a donation first? Or was he just trying to install malware on my computer? I mean, he must have made this video for a reason, right? I just wanted to know what the scan was so I could tell Frank what it was. I searched around in many books on the occult until I came upon them. They do have a name, but not one that you can speak freely in this tongue. Suffice it to say that certain supernatural creatures are willing to help us and mine our coin for us. Now, of course, you must be thinking that such a thing isn't worth your soul. Rest assured though that these creatures don't want our souls simply our bodies. I told them that in that case, they should buy us all a round of drinks first. He chuckled at his own joke. Anyway, the idea is simple. You, as a human, can rent out your body for a small portion of the day. In exchange, these creatures will mine coins for you. That's right I managed to connect the spirit realm with the internet, so that they can mine cryptocurrency for us. Right now, we are starting out with mining bitcoin by this method to test it out, but we'll release our own project very soon. I can say though that I am quite excited by the potential of our upcoming coin, as it will be mined only by these entities. All information would be held not only on the internet, but within the spirit realm as well, so even if every database on earth was wiped clean, we could recover the data. For now, though, we are just seeing how easy it is to mine bitcoin using this method. If you're interested in renting out yourself you can go ahead and sign the contract given on our site. If you're interested in simply buying some of our own coins when our new project will be released by conventional methods, please stay tuned for further updates. Thank you. The video ended and I was left confused. Making this all would have taken some cash and some time, so was it all really just a hoax? How were they planning on making money out of this? With no further information available, I checked out their forums, but that was only open to people who had signed their contract for now. I took a look at this contract. It was needlessly long and annoyed me because I knew there was no way that a site like this could ever take anyone to court if the contract was violated, so what was the point? The gist of the whole thing was that you would agree to rent out your body for a time ranging from 1 to 10 hours a day. In exchange, you would get a set amount of Bitcoin per day, with it increasing depending on how long you rented yourself out. Let's say you got X amount for an hour, then you'd get 20 times X for 10 hours. Clearly, it was designed for people to choose the maximum amount of time possible. Frustrated, I put down my selection as one hour and hit accept. A message popped up. This contract will be valid for one year and cannot be cancelled before then. Are you sure you want to accept? I scoffed at the idea of them trying to enforce this contract and hit the accept button. 
The congratulatory message popped up as well as an address to a wallet I could unlock. Disappointed, I browsed the site a bit more and saw nothing to explain what it really was. I could only chalk this all up to a very elaborate hoax. The next day I went about my day as usual when something odd happened as I left my driveway. I found myself in my office an instant later. If I had been paying a bit more attention at the time, I would have noticed that I had lost exactly one hour. But I wasn't I had zoned out while driving to work occasionally, but not when I was entering the building. I chalked it up to me just having a long daydream though. Things didn't worry me not yet at least. Something similar happened the next day, though I had some trouble noticing this as it happened, when I was chilling around at home, and I just thought I'd lost track of time as the sky suddenly became a lot darker. The third day, though it happened at work, I was in a meeting, and then it was over, and I was at my desk. On one hand, I was happy to be able to skip that meeting, but also I knew I was losing my mind. The MRIs all came back normal, and the doctors thought I had dissociative identity disorder when a month later I found myself in my house with some jewelry I had no recollection of getting. I learned the next day that one of my neighbors had been mugged, but didn't know who it was. That day, I suddenly found myself in a park with a shard of glass on my shoulder. I learned that someone had smashed another neighbor's car. Fed up with this, I installed cameras around the house to watch me, and that night I saw myself leave the house and come back later with some cash. Cash I must have stolen. Yeah, I learned someone's house had been broken into the day after that. I finally put two and two together, and went back to the website. I hadn't checked my wallet, but it had a substantial amount of Bitcoin now. Clearly, this thing hadn't been a hoax. They wouldn't be paying me, if they weren't getting something out of it. Whatever entity chose to inhabit my body started out by just mimicking what I normally did, but it was clear it was getting more and more daring with the theft and vandalism it was doing. I read up that loan contract again, and I saw no termination clause. I can't exactly communicate with this thing that takes control of me, and even if I could, I have a feeling that it doesn't want to leave. Forum posts on that site are of no help as a few people seem to be in the same boat as me, but have no idea what to do. The site doesn't have a customer service section to no surprise. Based on what I've read of the contract, the entity can't hurt me, or my property, or do a crime that would lead to me being arrested or the such. But it can do crime, as long as it makes sure that I'm not caught later on. Anyway, I highly doubt it wants me to be arrested, it would not have as much fun as when I'm free to roam around. In the end, though, I realized that I couldn't live like this. There was nothing else to do but wait for my contract to expire. So I've moved to a very remote area, where there are few people around. I'm glad that the thing can't harm anyone else. I've even had to give my dog away to my parents for the time being I don't know if she'd count as my property, but I don't want that thing hurting her one day. I read on a forum post on that side of someone who found themselves with blood on their hands after a blackout, and that they were freaking out while wondering whose it was. It's obviously much worse for those who rented out their bodies for several hours. I guess I should be thankful I only agreed to an hour. I quit my job and I only go out to town to get supplies when the hour is up. I thought about maybe tying myself up so I can't get out, but I'd still need to do things like go to the bathroom, and that sounds like a terrible way to live. It's been three months total and there are nine left. The coins I keep getting are enough to pay my living expenses, thankfully. I might have had to rent myself out for longer, if that wasn't the case. I'm writing this because I was curious if there's a lawyer among you who might be willing to read over the contract I agreed to. If every contract has a loophole, I'd be happy if you could find one in this one. I can't go to a regular attorney, of course, given no one would believe me. I mean, where would I even go to dispute this? But if there's someone among you who is experienced with dealing with supernatural contracts, do please contact me. If possible, I would also prefer it if you could accept payments in Bitcoin.